Falaflahiatu, good evening. You are watching BCN's News Bulletin for tonight. Leading our news, a statement by the Niue government's employment body, the Niue Public Service Commission, has been released after an advisory from Niue's financial secretary, Brendan B, to all heads of departments. The statement is to answer questions by the public as to why the financial secretary resigned not even a year into his two-year contract. The statement says that the employment of certain key positions of government in particular, those funded by external bilateral agreements and arrangements, are always made on the basis of mutual understanding and such decisions made in the case of the financial secretary were made on the understanding that the service provided by the current financial secretary will be available as long as it is required by the government of Niue. The present situation is that the services of the current financial secretary are no longer required as we have mutually agreed to in this instance. The Commission is always grateful to our major donor partners like NZAID and AusAid in helping us fund some of our key government positions and this relationship will continue on as normal for as long as Niue requires such assistance. Financial Secretary Brendan Beek is confirmed to leave on the 2nd of September. We wish him all the best in his future endeavours. Niue's Constitution Review's final report is scheduled to be tabled in the House of Assembly in just over a year. The terms of reference for the review of the Constitution Committee for 2011 to 2014 has been finalised with the Committee to consider and review the Constitution of Niue 1974, the Constitution Act 1974, with regards the, to the present participated needs of Niue. However, only 14 parts of the constitution is expected to be reviewed. Firstly, the international status of Niue. Secondly, the relationship between Niue and New Zealand. The appropriateness of having the Audit Office of New Zealand as the Auditor for Niue, the title Premier of the Niue Government, the title Legislative Assembly of the Niue Government, the number of members in the Niue Assembly, the number of ministers in the Niue Cabinet, the establishment and role status of associate ministers, the relationship of Article 35 to the Constitutional Polls Law, the composition of the Niue Public Service Commission, the official language or languages in the Niue Assembly, Article 23. Other matters may be referred to it by the Niue Assembly and all other issues that are relevant or consistent with in the consideration of issues listed to inform the new assembly of the progress work of the constitution review committee the final report or the findings and recommendations are to be tabled in the assembly meeting scheduled for the 26th of september 2012 one of the opposition members of Government of the Day is calling for a referendum on the review. We will bring you more on this news story in our future news bulletin. The story that we brought you on Tuesday evening about the Pacific Now Bilingual Coalition, today we managed to speak to one of the Niwayan representatives that travelled to Wellington for the discussions and contributions to the initiative. Today we caught up with Mrs. Rosa Kloudny, Viliko, who is here for a week for her take of what the program is. The Pacific Leo Coalition, Bilingual Coalition, it started when the Ministry of Education changed the Pacific, uh, Pacific Education Plan, the PEP. They changed the goals and not only that, they've cut the publishing of the Tupu and Folanga series. These are the only resources available to our Pacific students in New Zealand. And what has happened is that they are slowly, but very discreetly, taken a little bit away from our kids every time in education. Over the last 10 years, it has increasingly removed things from the Pacific Education Plan. And in this case, there were several Pacific Education Plan goals 
for our Pacific students. They were taken out of the out of the plan, and on top of that, they've cut this, the publishing of the resources. They are printed in those Leo, in those languages. So a group of five families came together to um, to complain, make a complaint about. It. They did complain. They went to the education department and it was mediated, didn't work out through. It is now in the hands of the Human, Human Rights Commission because they have invented on our students human rights to access in education. Mrs Viliko said there is much support for this initiative. We met with the Science Commission. We met with several other key members in the community and in parliament. And the second visit, the day before the petition handover, we visited the, the ACT Party, the National Caucus, and the Labour Caucus. And they were very, we have very, very strong support from Turiana and Peter Sharples, Honourable Peter Sharples, about the language situations and where we are at. So we're pretty confident. We're making progress, steps forward. It's now in their hands. We are progressing with the Human Rights Commission material at this moment. So why would you say it is important uh, for Pacific Island communities and their language, languages to be recognised within New Zealand? One, it is within our rights too, because we are part of the New Zealand realm. So New Zealand ha has got responsibilities towards our languages and because of the significant relationships we have with New Zealand, um, the Samoa will be, language will be under the treaty, the friendship treaty that New Zealand has with Samoa and then of course we have the Tongan languages as well with their historical views on where people in the Pacific have been in the past contributed to the success stories in New Zealand and the history of how people came on board to New Zealand at the time when New Zealand needed them. We had people when, who were out in services in the wars representing New Zealand and it's not only those reasons but it's also now we're not telling a migrant story anymore. We're no longer migrants in Aotearoa. We've got three, four, five generation Pacific Island people living in New Zealand who are New Zealanders who have every right to ha access to their language, their cultural identity and their heritage. As we all know, we cannot tell our stories in any other language. The meaning will change. Unless you tell it in Mangahauni way, then you really learn to appreciate the depth and meaning of where those stories come from. Niwe has shown sup much support for the petition as Niwe uses the same resources on the island for educational purposes. We wish the Pacific Lao Bilingual Coalition success in putting forward Pacific needs. Rough conditions out at sea have delayed Niwe Fisheries plans to deploy the new fishing aggregate devices. Fisheries manager James Tafatu says that the first five fads will be placed in areas near Mutalo, Hiktavake, Tuapa, Amasele and Tamakautonga. These locations were selected based on data collected from fishermen about areas where they usually fish from. This exercise has been a long time coming as the fads have been ready for some time now but progress was hampered due to waiting for an appropriate vessel to be sourced to be able to deploy the devices. The arrival of the new launch is quite timely and plans have been put in motion. The logistics into the locations will be slightly different from the previous sites, taking into account that they will need to be placed in areas to be accessible for both dinghy and canoe fishermen. James says the expectation is that the devices will enable fishermen to catch more fish and also save on fuel costs by not taking the fads too far out. There are also plans for later on to deploy fads for sports fishermen further out at sea. 
The deployment exercise was meant to be carried out this week but was abandoned due to choppy conditions out at sea. Weather permitting and depending on the conditions out on the water, and that will determine the length of time it will take to place all the FADs in their designated locations. Team Niwe is preparing to head off for the 14th Pacific Games to be hosted by New Caledonia, with the first lot of sports codes departing tomorrow. Golf and clay target shooting will be heading to New Zealand to join athletes from the UN community in New Zealand. And the Niwe shooting squad will also spend time in competition while in New Zealand entering a competition down the line in Pukekohe. This will provide further practice and preparation time for the team before heading to Nomel. The Niue Primary School will also be holding a special Mufti Day tomorrow to raise funds to support Niue's team to the Games. The remainder of the Niue-based athletes will leave the island next week. The Games will be held from the 27th of August to the 10th of September, with 22 island nations represented in 28 different sports codes. And that is our news bulletin that we have for you tonight. We do hope that you enjoy the weekend ahead. Don't forget to check out the La Capa annual show day this coming Saturday and take the family for a fun day out.